and um, Bella. And we've just had brilliant to thing here today. Uh, today's topic is puppet stamen. Now, I promised you a little teaser. Um, Neil Silverman started playing in our club um, maybe three, three years ago, four, I'm not quite sure. I started playing with him a couple of years ago. And um, there was a buzz going around the club. Oh, he's the one who invented Puppet Stamen. Yeah, Neil, Neil's the one behind Puppet Stamen. So I had never heard of Neil Silverman until he came to our club. But I have to say, for those of you who don't know him, he's a very obliging um, player at the table. He is very courteous. Uh, he doesn't throw his weight around. When we used to play at Bob Shoestack's table, Bob was in his 90s, could barely see, spilled his food all down his front, covered in crumbs, but the nicest guy always had a little joke, always was flattering to the ladies. And Neil would say to him, Bob, are you sure you don't have a diamond in your hand? When, when, when Bob went to play something else, and he'd say to me, I don't want to get a good board because Bob couldn't see his cards. Now that's the kind of man that Neil is. So very gracious bridge player. So um, I, I looked up, I Googled Puppet Stamen and in Wikipedia, I found a reference to the fact that Neil Silverman uh, invented Puppet Stamen. So the story was true. So I called Neil and I said, Neil, you know, I'm going to be talking about Puppet Stamen this weekend. And um, could I have a little story? So he rounded things out. He said that he got so fed up playing, you know, one no trump, two clubs, and partner says two diamonds or they bit their suit. Um, but especially with two diamonds, um, the opponents knew that, that you know, one certainly didn't have a four card major, the other one had one or both, and they had a much better road, a much better pathway to accurate defense. So Neil invented puppet statement. So the idea being that it would, the auction would go something like this, one no trump, two clubs, puppet. Do you have a five card major or do you have a four card major? And the answer would be, if they bid it, it was a five card major and we know where we we're going. But if we bid two diamonds, it might say, well, I don't have a five, but I may or may not have a four. So that was back in the 70s when uh, Neil played on a team with uh, Kit Woolsey and a couple of other people whose names I don't remember, but Woolsey is a very well known um, player and he's got bids named for him as well. And um, anyway, they, they started doing this and Neil wrote it up and sent it to a magazine called Bridge World, which is somewhat higher level, much more advanced readership than our Bridge Bulletin that has many articles for newer players. So in any case, uh, Neil wrote this up, this treatment, sent it to Bridge World, who liked it and published a story about it. And the editor at that time called it Puppet Stamen. So that's how it, it got the name of Puppet Stamen and it became popular. And then Neil stopped playing while he and his wife raised their two sons. He gave up playing for 15, 20 years, something like that. And um, Kit Woolsey tweaked Neil's original idea of Puppet and turned it more into what it is today. So that's the story behind it. And I, I love these stories of how bids came to be created. And most of them, this one, like everything else, was because a player found that, that there was something wrong with the current treatment or this was a better way to handle things. So um, let's start with some hands. As always, um, we're going to have some very straightforward hands just to review how we already handle responses to one no trump. So Don, go ahead. Perfect. Okay, so um, I'm going to open these cards so everybody can see everything, including the people at the table. So with, with the south hand, it's pretty obvious what Leslie's going to bid, a transfer to spades.
So with a six card suit, it's very straightforward. We can transfer at the two level. We could even transfer at the four level if we thought there might be a game. Three, five, eight with eight points and six spades. Just go straight to game. So four spades by Leslie. We know we have an eight card fit and the extra length, we've got six spades, the extra length makes it almost worthwhile taking this chance. And as you can see, we have no spade losers, one heart loser, one club loser, one diamond loser. It's gonna make four, four spades pretty handily. So I think everybody knows if they've got a six card major, we're going to transfer to it. So today I decided that I would move the deals around the table so that everybody would feel a little bit involved. Now, Marissa has a six four hand. So I'm pretty certain that I taught retex some time back. So let's see if Marissa remembers how to handle this. Very good, excellent. So two clubs, partner, do you have a four card major? Two diamonds, no, I don't. And now what is Marissa going to do to show her hand? Uh, not enough, Marissa. This would say that you just want to play hearts or spades, whichever your partner has more of. So your bid is going to be four hearts, which is a delayed Texas transfer into your six card spade suit. And I have to alert it. Okay. Yes, you have to say that uh, bid four hearts and say spades. Uh, okay. So see how, in fact, all you have to do is just put S for spades. Um, so I want everybody to notice that Marissa alerted this correctly. We still have to alert or announce these transfers. Okay. Now, what she has clearly shown um, is uh -oh. that she has four hearts and six spades. This is the only way the auction would go like this. So this is a this is what we call retext when her re, when response rebid is a Texas transfer it shows six four here six spades and four hearts retext one no trump by Leslie by self. I was just counting. Okay. So South is Leslie, uh, West is Marissa, North is Don, and East is Debbie. And I'll call them either by their names, I'll call them by a name. Hopefully you can remember who's who. So with five five, how should Don handle his two suits? No, when we're five five, we start with a transfer. So please undo. And we always transfer to spades when we have both. Five, four, we would start with statement, but here we're going to make a transfer to spades. That completes the transfer. And now Don bids three hearts. And this says, partner, I have five spades. I also have five hearts. I know you must have three of one of them. So you decide where we belong. I also have enough to be in game. I would not bid this way otherwise. Very good. So Leslie has bid four spades, even though she has three hearts as well. She wants the benefit of having the lead come up towards her they're probably going to lead a club or a diamond since Don has promised both majors. So the lead needs to come up to Leslie's hand. Okay. So five, five, we transfer to spades and then rebid hearts. Is the 
same hand that everybody else has had, Marissa. Thank okay. you. Nothing to think about. I was counting. <laughs> <laughs> now with five four, we always start with stamen. Because we don't care which which uh, major our partner has. Now she doesn't have one. So with a game forcing hand, Smolen now comes into play. And we're going to jump to the three level in our four card suit. Excellent, Debbie clearly knows this bid. Three hearts. And Marissa understands that this means that Debbie has three, has four hearts and five spades. So as she has three spades, she can bid three spades or four spades. We're in a game forcing auction. There's nothing wrong with three spades because if Debbie had a, a slam going hand, she could now cube it on the way to four spades. But here she's saying she's got enough for game, but no more. Okay. Recognize your hand, Don. No need to count it. Thank you. The four four is just regular stamen, our old friend. Perfect. We don't have one. Ten points, no fit in the major. So all of these are very, very straightforward, and they should all be within your repertoire. We had um, we had retex, we had stamen, we had transfers, we had um, a transfer when you're five five in the majors, and we had a smolen bid. All of these are part of our basic stamen and transfer sequences. So let's go on to the next hand. Now, Marissa, has cho uh, Debbie's chosen to open one no trump, and we can all see that she has a five card major. So let's see what happens when uh, Marissa bids two clubs. Well, Deb's going to bid two spades. Is going to say, nope, that's not what I wanted to hear. But I do have enough to be in game, three no drop. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and they will never find their five three fit. Uh -huh. I always tell new players that we should not open one no trump with a five card major until we add puppet stamen to our toolkit. So we're going to now bid puppet stamen. I, I think I set up the next hand so we could do it, but. Um, and why wouldn't we do it here? Open one spade. Because we're learning puppet stamen. Oh, oh okay. So you're just waiting. So instead of redoing that hand, we're going to start over. Oh, you know, okay. We're going to introduce puppet stamen. So one <clears throat> Trump by Debbie. Same. Everybody's got the same cards. One no Trump. Excuse me. I'm sorry to interrupt. Can you put on sharing so I can let people in? I I did it a long time ago. I I think I had to go out and come back in. I don't have. Oh it. well, that I didn't know about. It's going to take me a while to find. Oh, sorry. You. Sorry, I made a mistake. I can't. I don't know what I was thinking. I just hold on a second. I'll I'm just, I must click. Oh. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, I'm no Trump. Okay, so I must oh. click, sorry. No, 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 Un undo please, Marissa. Oh, I have to undo again, I'm sorry. Another undo. 
Okay. Now, because we're now grown-ups at the bridge table and we're adding puppet stamen to our toolkit, that's what we're going to use on this hand. Why? Because although we have a four card major, we also have a three card major. So we want to be able to ask partner, partner, I know you open one no trump, but do you happen to have a five card major? Because if you do, we, I may have a fit with you. So two clubs, we're not gonna change. When Neil invented it, he used two clubs, but we're going to use three clubs provided that we have a game forcing hand. And Marissa does, she's got, she's got 10 points. So three clubs. Now this has to be alerted. So um, just undo it one more time, please, Marissa. And so you can type in puppet. And I, puppet is enough. So, okay. But when you're, when you're alerting, don't you have to actually say what it means? Um, you can do. If, if we were playing face to face, right. just to alert it is enough. And then people can say, what is it? And you can say puppet. And then they can say, what does that mean? But it's yeah. easy to put puppet or you could put ask for more information. Or you could say asks for five card major. No, not, no, you, you can't say five card major. Oh, oh yes, Leslie can, right? Um, but she doesn't have to answer. I mean, she doesn't have to explain that because spades is natural. But the three club has a special meaning. So that's why we have to explain that one. Okay. So now does, um, does Marissa have a fit with Debbie's spades? Yes. Yes, she does. So four spades. So here's the possibilities. When we ask this question, do you have... Do you have a five card major? The answer is no, um, or no, but I do have a four card major, or no, I don't have a five. I may or may not have a four card major. So again, Neil has tweaked this so that it's fashionable at our club, I don't know about the rest of the world, to have very special meanings for the answers. So first of all, does anybody have a question about right where we are now? There is a question. Yes. Okay. One of the duties is asking, does distribution matter? Could we not just go to three no Trump? Uh, whose distribution? Not clear. Okay. So with this hand, she just wants to know. Because if her partner has a five card major, we probably should belong in the major. Isn't, isn't that what I always say when you have an eight card fit in yes. a major, play in the major. And she replied, she's talking about the responder. Okay, well, that if you, even if you've got a balanced hand, partner, if partner's got a five card major, wait for this, if you're not a maths genius, I think you'll be able to figure this out. If he has a five card major, he has a doubleton somewhere. So we might have, we might have problems in, in one of these minors, for instance. We've got control of the hearts right now, but we're wide open in diamonds and not much better in clubs. If partner is short in one of those suits, it could be troublesome. So when we have an eight card fit, we should play in the major. Leave the three right. to Trump to the experts. But obviously, I asked this question because I have at least three of both mayors. Exactly. Now, Marissa just hit the nail on the head. We never use puppet statement unless we have at least one three card major. So I played with somebody recently and we had puppet on our card. I opened one no Trump. She bid puppet. I replied. And to my amazement, when the dummy came down, she was four, four in the majors. Clearly she did not understand the purpose of puppet. We don't use puppet just because we have 10 points. We use it to uncover a possible five, three fit. 
Well, this person will probably say, if she's got a five card major, she's going to build it anyway, so that's okay. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Use the right tools for the right situation. Okay, when we, when we bid two clubs, Stamen, we guarantee at least one four card major. When we bid three clubs, three clubs, puppet stamen, we guarantee at least one three card major. We may or may not have a four card major as well. Okay. So I think I made the next um, several ones. Oh no, it's still moving around. No. Now Marissa has the same hand. So once again, she's going to bid three clubs puppet. And now Deb is going to, well, first of all, she doesn't have one. So her answer is no, I don't have a five. But she wants to say I may or may not have a four. And that's a three diamond bid. So now when it comes back to Marissa, we're going to think same kind of thoughts that we that when we have uh, been smaller. So oh, yeah. we have a fit in hearts. We really want the no Trump opener to be the declarer. Mm -hmm. So we are going to bid the suit we do not have four of. So Marissa is going to bid three spades, and that has to be alerted as four hearts. Welcome. Not this way, okay. Mm -hmm. So, so, so the beauty of this rosemary is if she didn't have four, if um, Deb didn't have four hearts, she could still have, there's still space for her to bid three no trump. Exactly, exactly. She would just bid three no trump. And okay. we'll have that hand in a moment, I'm sure. Okay. Hopefully we will. So this is the, the first challenge that we really had in this system. So everything we've done so far was everything that you've always done with, with two clubs as stamen and making transfers or making Texas transfers or a delayed Texas transfer. So this one is the first real problem. Do you have a five card major? No, I don't. I may or may not have a four card major. Three spades says, well, actually, I've got four hearts. Do we have a fit? Yes, we do. Perfect. If she didn't have four hearts, she would bid three no trump. Okay. Question before you go. Yes, go ahead. Okay, the question is, why doesn't the three diamonds show at least one four card major? Well, because if, if we, many people play that way. But in Neil's opinion, when we, when we say we don't have one, it gives the, uh, the defenders a very good feel for the hand. They, they know that Declara doesn't have four of either major. This way, it's much more murky. So in this auction, turns out they have four hearts. So that's a, defending four hearts is quite different from defending three no trump case you hadn't realized that. Um, so if, 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 if Debbie had now bid three no Trump to say she didn't have, um, have, you know, a fit with whatever partner is promising, they still wouldn't know if she had four spades or not. They don't have such a clear cut picture of the opener's hand. So that's the reason why it's become fashionable amongst those of us who know Neil and listen to him to bid three diamonds to say, I may or may not have a four card major. And does the diamonds need to be alerted? Yes. Okay, I didn't alert it. Because, because it may or may not. And that's different from what most, from standard. Okay, before we change the hand, another question, please. Ed. Okay. What would West bid if, uh, I don't quite understand, if four spades and three hearts instead? 
Oh, I see. Four pieces of spades and three hearts. Well, if she had four spades and three hearts, she would bid three hearts. To say, I do not have three, I do not have four hearts. Oh, okay. Therefore, I must have four spades because I, I bid puppet statement. I've definitely got um, a four card major. Let's see if that's the next hand. No, it's not quite. So one no trump. Now Marissa has two three card majors this time. Wouldn't it be great if partner has five spades or five hearts? Let's ask, three clubs. Do you have a five card major? Three diamonds. No, I don't have a five. I may or may not have a four card major. So do I say no five, but may or may not? Do I say all that? <laughs> you say three diamonds, no five, plus four. No, you have to say no five, plus possible four. Well, doesn't help me. <laughs> well, it does because she doesn't have a five, so you bid three no trump. Yeah, yeah. Okay, partner, I don't have a four card major myself. But you see, the opponents don't know what Deb's hand looks like. They just know she doesn't have a five card major, but she could easily have a four. And so they're kind of in the dark when it comes to defense. So moving on. Question. Did you say a question? Yes. Excuse me. Okay. Does the three clubs by responder say they have both a three card major and a four card major? No. It just says I have at least one three card major. Do you have a five card major? Maybe we have a fit. And the reply was, I don't have a five. I may or may not have a four. And Marissa said, tough. I don't have a four. I was only interested if you have a five. I'm bidding three, no Trump. Good luck, partner. Over and out. But she needs 10 points. But you have to have 10 points because you're, you've put your partner in game. So you, you need 10 points to initiate puppet statement. Okay. Perfect. Don says, partner, I have at least one three card major. Did you open with a five card major? And Leslie said, no, no five. I may or may not have a four card major. Both the three clubs and the three diamonds should be alerted. Is that correct? Yes, they should be alerted. Three clubs um, asking for more info or asking for five card major. Three diamonds, no five, possible four. Now three spades says, um, I have four hearts. So you might, you might put that on, when you alert this bid, you might say, uh, you don't have to say anything about spades. Artificial with four hearts. And uh, Leslie's been three no trump. So we, we've got a four three fit in each major. So that's a good source of tricks. We're going to get at least 
um, three spade tricks by the look of it and three heart tricks. So that's six and two clubs is eight and at least one diamond is nine. So this is definitely gonna make three no trump as expected. No problems at all. Look how Deb has alerted her bid, asking for five card major. What? No, 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 no. That's not right. Three diamonds. What is this? I think that was an accident. You have to say three. Can't, can't do, please, um, Debbie. Perfect. Three clubs asking for a five card major. So concerned about the alert that I hit the wrong key. <laughs> <laughs> the three diamonds. Um, no, no five may or may not have a four. Now you see she doesn't have a four. So other people would just bid three no trump. But that gives a roadmap. So here three diamonds is kind of unhelpful to the defense. And uh, what is Debbie gonna do now? I've tempted to do a quant, no, I don't have enough for a quantitative. No, you don't. Okay. So Debbie, said she was thinking if she had enough for slam. So I'm going to tell you that experts, you know, they do thousands, hundreds of thousands of simulations. And here's a tip from a group of experts who said that you, you need an absolute minimum of 14 opposite your partner's one no Trump opener to even think about a slam. And of course, that would not be a balanced hand. That would be a hand with a great source of tricks in a long suit that could very easily be set up for one loser at most. So uh, just, you know, that's a little tip for the day. Okay, a question, please. Yes. Okay, if the responder had bid three spades, is that considered a transfer? At which point now? I'm not sure. I would assume that instead of the three clubs. There are no transfers at the three level. Thank you. On no Trump opener. That makes life simple. Okay, so one no trump, 15 to 17. Three clubs, puppet statement. You have a five card major, three diamonds, no, no five. I may or may not have a four. Three no trump, I don't have a four myself. Good luck, partner. Paul, please add to your last um, line, and a very long suit. Because that's, I don't want people going to slamming with 14 points and a balance <laughs> hand. Okay, so one no trump, three clubs asking for a five card major. Bingo, I have one. I have five hearts.
Whoopie do, four hearts, we have a fit. It's worth it just to get to this lovely contract. So we're we going to make four hearts. Well, ace king of clubs, lose two diamonds, no spade losers, no heart losers. So maybe I probably have to lose two diamond tricks. So otherwise, you're going to make it. Um, okay, Deb, count your points, please. And ask for an undo. Told us all the hands were the same. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> you trying to move it along. <laughs> can't trust me. Undo again, please. I don't like that bid. <laughs> oh, am I a two? Oh, I didn't I'm count them again. <laughs> so this is two no Trump, yes? This is going to be two no Trump, yes. Yeah. Same deal. Now, here's the interesting thing. We do not play yeah. puppet over an opening bid of two no trump. Why is this? Because it doesn't make very much difference whether we're in no trump or in, or in our suit. And so when we've got such a strong hand, no trump rates to be probably at least as good a contract, maybe better. Because we have much less liability for things going wrong when we open two no trump. So two no trump, three no trump. No information has been given to the opponents whatsoever. Now, a lot of people play puppet over two no trump. But my recommendation, and it's not just from me, these tips that I pass on to you have been gleaned from people who are much, much better players than me. Um, I go to the teacher convention. Uh, when there's no pandemic. And there's always a panel of very high level speakers um, people who write for the Bridge Bulletin, people like Larry Cohen, Billy Miller. And um, they often have an expert panel and we can all write questions and hand them in. And unequivocally, all four experts on the panel, 100% said, do not play puppet over a two no Trump opener. So that's what I bring back, you know, to my students and, and to the way I play. And I get my partners to change their systems accordingly. And when I give them the list of expert names that say this, they reluctantly agree to do what I want. Um, so that this is my advice to you over to no Trump, do not play puppet statement. But I find that very interesting because that's what most people play it over and don't play it over one. I understand. So maybe maybe this session today will change your thinking somewhat. It's very least. interesting. Yes, there is a question, please. Excuse yes. me. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, this one's from Michelle, who is asking, can you ask for a four card major over two no trump? Oh, absolutely. Yes, that's normal. Two no trump, three clubs, do you have a four card major? Yes, because when we're four four, we probably want to play in it because then we're going to get more than four tricks in the suit. Think about it, if we're four, four, then the opponents have five. So they mostly split three, two. So we can cash our ace, king and queen, and we will still have one spade left in each hand that if we're careful, we can use separately. So we will make five tricks out of only four tricks in no trump in, in that trump suit. So yes, we definitely want to be in a 4-4 four, four fit, but not necessarily in a 5-3 fit, because you can see here that we get five tricks in spades. And um, we probably will get five tricks in spades, even if we're in, um, in a trump suit, because we have to pull the trump in three rounds. 
and then we get two more spade tricks. So we get five. But when we're in a four forfeit, we can only ever get four tricks in no trump, but we frequently get five tricks in a suit contract. Another question? Yes. Okay. This is probably from the point of view of defense when the other team is playing puppet. While not wanting to play puppet over two no trump, some teams do so. How is it done? So if we're on defense, we understand the bid. Um, then you can ask. You can all, if they play three clubs and they don't alert it as puppet, then, um, and I'm, I'm not sure over two no trump if puppet is alertable. Um, no, puppet is not alertable over a two no trump opener. So it's not clear to you as a defender. So then you can say, are you playing puppet or not? But I think the responses have to be alerted. So if they are playing puppet, it goes two no trump, three clubs, not alertable. And if they bid three hearts, if that shows five, I think they have to alert it as a five card suit. And they would have to alert three diamonds as um, no five, but they have a four because that's how most people play it. So good question. And remember that if you don't understand a bit at the table, it is always your right to ask um, what the bid means or, or what is that or what does the bid mean? Remember, if it's, if it's not alerted, it should be natural. If you later find out that they made an artificial bid and did not alert it, then you can call the director and you may be given some redress. Um, in, what, in what terms, you may get an adjusted score because you were damaged from the failure to alert. Okay. So I think that's the final deal in this set. So um, we went through it very quickly. As you see, we did not play any of the hands. So does anybody want me to repeat any of these deals? Because I can run through them again very quickly if there are any questions. I can't go backwards, but I can go back to the very beginning and scroll through rapidly. Um, so let me summarize. Number one, we can use puppet stamen over a one note trump opener but we do not recommend using it over a two no trump opener. The purpose of puppet stamen is to ask the opener if he or she has a five card major. Why? Because we have a three card major ourselves and we want to be in a five three fit if partner should have a five card major and we have a fit with him. So how do we do this? We distinguish it from our regular two club statement asking for a four card major. And we jump to three clubs asking partner if he has a five card major. In, because we are now in a game forcing auction, as responder, we must have 10 points, 10 high card points in order to initiate puppet statement. So one no Trump opener, three clubs by responder, puppet statement. The opener's responses are three spades, I have five spades. Or three hearts, yes, I have five hearts. Or three diamonds, I do not have a five card major. I may or may not have a four card major. So how does responder continue? If responder has only three card majors, he just bids three no trump over three diamonds. We do not have a fit in a major. If he has a four card major, he bids the suit that he does not hold four cards in. And by the way, he can never have four four in the majors because if he did, he would not have bid puppet statement. So the most he'll ever have is one four card major and one three card major. So it's very straightforward. 
I hope that's a good, um, a good summary. I can see there's a question that's saying, um, could it be any three card quality? Yes. As long as we have 10 points, we still want to be in the five, three, fifth, if there is one, even if we've got the two, three, four. Any other questions? Any questions from my guinea pigs who did such an able job coping with my messing around here? Rosemary, other than indicating on your card that you said that you play puppet, um, is there a place or a way to say that you open one no trump with a five card major? Yes, it's on the convention card. And if you have it to hand and look at it, right under where you put your range, 15 to 17, it says five card major common. Ah, okay. So um, you just check off that box if it's your habit to open one no trump with a five card major. Okay. This bit is like golden because to me, having always said the two diamonds, no, it feels like it's giving so much information away. Exactly. exactly. You know, we're very fortunate to, um, in, in the world of bridge, it's so different from the world of golf or the world of tennis. <laughs> that if you go to play golf, you're very unlikely to play as part of your, your four with, with Tiger Woods or whoever the big names are these days, I'm out of touch. Um, but I mean, in my day, when Chris Evert was at the top of the tennis world, whoever would get a chance to play with her when we go out in the tennis court. But in bridge, you can sit down every day and play against pros. You know, we've got a couple of uh, experts at our club, um, Bernie de Young, Neil, Barnett Schenkin, and his wife, Maggie, um, we're very, very fortunate to have these very high caliber players. Um, and other clubs in, in Florida have wonderful pros as well. And I know some of you play at clubs where there are pros that are different from our pros. And we're very fortunate because the, the better ones are very good at answering questions. Very patient with new players. Excuse me, speaking of questions, we have four questions. Good. No Passover yet. <laughs> All right. Anita is asking with four, four, I assume she's saying majors, and 10 points or more, responder still bids two clubs? Two clubs, because bidding Puppet Stamen and jumping to three clubs guarantees at least one three card major in your hand. Okay, thank you. The next question Why is the bid? three hearts if four spades and three spades, what? Well, we bid the suit we don't have because if we find a fit, we want the opener to be the declarer, not the responder. Okay. And the next one uh, on the convention card, I think you answered this, but it may be she missed it. Uh, do you put puppet stamen next to three clubs in the one no trump open section? Yes. Because that's what, if that's what you're playing, once you add puppet, that's where it goes. One no trump, three clubs is puppet statement. Okay, next question. This person says that I read that when you have five spades and 17 points, you should always open one spade. Yes, because you're too good for one no trump. Okay. And another good question. If using puppet, is Smolin a required tool first? Well, what I said was that it, it's not called Smolin over puppet. It's just called puppet stamen, but it's the same principle as Smolin. So I mentioned it because the two, the two bids are very similar in as much as we bid the suit we do not have. Okay. And another question just appeared. This one is with five slash three in the major, do we transfer? Yes. I think that's all the questions so far. Okay. Well, we have a few minutes left, so let's go on to a random deal. 
Uh, another question just snuck in. Okay. If there is time, could Rosemary comment on the three diamond, three heart, and three spade bib? Um, overall one, no trump opener. These are by agreement. So in the course of my bridge career, I've used those bids for a number of different things. So um, here's what I have on, I have to find a, a decent card. Uh, okay, here's what I play when I play with Lee Atkinson. Lee is one of the finest players at our club. Um, if, if you're thinking about playing with um, an expert, um, a pro, in, you know, to raise money for Alzheimer's, Lee is a great partner. She's kind, she's extremely competent. She's got great visualization skills. She, she can see what you must have in your hand for the bid and she places the contract magnificently. Um, so with Lee, we play that one knows three clubs is puppet. We play that one knows three diamonds is five five in the minors game force. That means I'm only 2-1 or 3-0 in the majors if I make that bid. And then the opener can decide where to go. Um, one no three hearts says I have a singleton heart with three spades and I'm 5-4 in the minors. So this is warning my partner, the opener, that we could have problems in the heart suit because this is where my shortness is. But if she's got the ace, king, queen, or the ace, queen, jack, or something like that, she's not worried. She can play three, no trump happily. But if she's got queen third, she'll be very nervous and maybe look for a better place to play. Similarly, one no trump, three spades shows a singleton spade with three hearts. And again, five, four in the minors, either way, five diamonds and four clubs or four diamonds and five clubs but declare has got a good picture of your hand and will know what to do, where to place the contract. Okay, any other questions? There. Yes. Okay, go ahead. I have a question. I thought earlier, oh, where is it? Sorry. Oh, several here. Uh, could you please talk about opening one no trump with five hearts, but not with five spades? It's the same thing. Okay. Next question. If you overcall two no trump after week two, is three clubs by advancer, stamen or puppet? It would be stamen. Because when, when partner, think about the hand. So when partner over calls two no trump, let's say it goes two hearts, two no trump. This would suggest that partner does not have five spades because if he did and he had a good hand with 15 to 17 points, he would overcall one spade. I mean, two spades. So it really denies holding five spades. So three clubs would be regular statement. He could easily have four spades and not being able to overcall it because um, alert everybody, we need five cards to overcall a suit. So yesterday somebody overcalled a four card suit at the two level and um, it really screwed us up. So I have no idea what was going on at the table. Okay, next question, please. Mm -hmm. Uh, I thought earlier when Debbie bid three diamonds that it wasn't a bid. Now it appears it can be. Yes, but, um, but you have to have an agreement. You can't pull it out of the air without having discussed it with your partner. So you saw that I took a few seconds to find one of my convention cards where I had that filled out. And because with a lot of people, we don't play any of those bids. They just don't exist in our system. That's because I play weak no trumps with some of my partners. And um, our bid there would be a five card suit and invitational for any, any um, bid at the three level. We, do, we, we never open one no trump with a five card major. Bella and I never do. But when I play with Maggie, we do. 
M and Maggie and I play transfers, but Bella and I have a completely different no trump system and we don't play transfers. So this is why we have convention cards so that we can record our agreements with multiple different partners. And I have to say that part of the fun of playing bridge is having all these different partners and having to be on top of whatever system we play. And I've said this before that when I go to the bridge club, I usually sit down with a cup of coffee for half an hour and go over my card with whoever I'm playing with that day to make certain that I have the agreements safe in my mind. Because face-to-face -face bridge, we're not allowed to look at our convention card during the auction. Okay, you have another question, Paul? No, but I wanna make sure to remind everyone with five minutes to go, next week, it will be the same time, but the time won't be the same because <laughs> Saturday night, you have to advance one hour for daylight savings. So please don't miss the lesson. Yeah, I haven't decided what I'm gonna talk about next week. Um, so any requests? Mm. Just going to look in my book and see what would come next. I'm missing. Mm. Oh, you maybe I'll talk about negative doubles next week. Yes, that would be nice. Yeah. Okay, because there's one or two things about negative doubles that we ought to know. So we'll talk about negative doubles next week. Very easy session with a bit of new stuff. Okay. All right. Yeah, Rosemary, I think we'll be able to uh, tell you of our failures in uh, in uh, Puppet next week. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that? Oh, that was Steve Raidstern. <laughs> well, just, just remember, if, you, if you're going to play Puppet, um, you should just sit down with your partner, get them on the phone or something and say, let's agree to play Puppet only over one no trump openers it guarantees at least 10 points it guarantees at least one three card major are we on the same page and um and then you have both have to remember what you're doing so um i always say that we will screw things up three times before we get it right and i mean i was so embarrassed i added a new tool playing with neil and even though I'd looked at my card before the session, when it came up, I completely forgot. But he's a very kind partner. And uh, he said, well, you know, you just forgot, that's okay, but don't forget again. I will never forget again uh, because I was mortified that I should forget when I'm playing with an expert. Um, but it happens to everybody. And when we add something new, be prepared for failure. In fact, it's time for a little story. And when I was at my club in New Jersey, there were a pair named Cynthia and Eli. And um, Eli was my, was my birthday twin. We shared the same day and the same year. There was a beautiful birthday cake at the club and I thought somebody got it for me until I saw it said, happy birthday, Eli. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's not the story, it just came to mind. So they were reputed to be very fine players and they frequently did very badly at the club. And I said to the club owner, um, Sue, I said, what's with these two? I thought they were good players. She said, well, they are. I said, well, how come they're bottom half the time? She said, oh, she said, because that's where they're practicing their new skills, new tools. And they screw up all the time, but then they get it right. And only when they get it right, do they play it in a tournament. That was a very valuable lesson for me to learn when I was you know, pretty much a beginner, with only a couple of years experience. So um, we, we, we practice our tools in club games. And also you can go to a bidding table here on BBO with one of your partners. And that's a wonderful tool also. The way it works is that you sit down with your partner at a bidding table, uh, you find it under practice and the computer will deal hands. The opponents do not bid. 
So you and your partner can just bid your hands. And when you, you know, reach the end of the auction, you just look to see if your contract is makeable, if you're in the right contract. And if neither of you have an opening hand, you just pass. And, um, but it's, it's, it's a really good skill. I've had students where they've hired me just to sit for an hour at a bidding table and do this kind of thing. It's a really valuable exercise. Okay. Of course, there's no guarantee that hands will come up to use the tool that you really want to practice. But nevertheless, I think it's an excellent uh, tool. Okay, well, that ends the formal part of today's lesson.